So how do patients with heart failure typically present? What sort of historical, so story type um, things will they tell you? And then what will you see on physical exam? So mo most time they complain of progressive fatigue and shortness of breath. And they first notice this in their activities of daily living. If they're walking, they used to walk three blocks and they were not short of breath. Now after a block, they're short of breath. Now, this fatigue or shortness of breath may progress to the activities of daily living, and it may progress at rest. And then when we talk about how sick the patients are, when the patients start developing orthopnea, so if they are unable to lie flat, because what happens is when you lie flat on your bed, the edema that is in the lower extremities get redistributed into the venous system, and then it, it rushes into the heart, and then the left side of the heart may not be able to handle that extra volume. And because of that, the pressure increases and leads into pulmonary edema. So patients who have uh, congestive heart failure may complain that when they lie flat on the bed, they have to uh, wake, you know, stand up because when they stand up, the pressure goes into the legs and it's not that much into the chest and, and the congestion in the lungs improves. So, so exercise-related shortness of breath to shortness of breath at rest to orthopnea. And you have another uh, symptom that is typical, which is uh, paroxysmal nocturnia, uh, nocturnal dyspnea. That is that they may have a little bit of swelling. When they first lie on the bed, they are fine. But then after two or three hours, they wake up in the middle of the night, short of breath, because precisely of this redistribution of fluid. So, so the, the, the presentation could be a, an episode of PND. If the patient has been in denial or has been attributing their fatigue to something else, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, it may be that they don't get diagnosed until they have orthopnea or they have an episode of PND. You could also present with lower extremity edema. So as you know, the heart actually is two hearts in one. So there is the right heart that sends the blood to the lungs to be oxygenated and then the, blood oxygen, the oxygenated blood goes to the left and then it's pumped into the whole system. So if you only have right-sided heart failure, you may not complain that much of shortness of breath or pulmonary edema, but rather from swelling in your legs or increasing uh, abdominal GERD, abdominal volume because of ascites, you know, fluid retention in the belly, or you could develop pleural effusions because of the increased pressure in the whole venous system. So the symptoms could uh, vary it from lower extremity edema to shortness of breath and exertion to episodes of PND. Okay. Now, at the physical exam, is, is different. Uh, the increased pressure in the right side of the heart gets manifested with an increased uh, jugular vein pressure, or JVP. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, there are ways to explain. It will be difficult to explain exactly how you do that. But looking at the way of the neck veins are behaving is a marker uh, to assess the pressure in the right side of the heart. The hepatojugular reflux is something that I use frequently. If the liver is distended because of the pressure, when you press in the right upper quadrant, you could see the level of the blood going up. And that's a way to know that the patient is congested. And then the lower extremity edema, if you have pitting edema, that's a marker also. Now, you could have pitting edema, yes, because you are obese, and mm -hmm. then the belly is creating a resistance for the return, or you have viruses and venous insufficiency. So the JVP is a very good marker because that, that is a more direct marker of what is happening in the right atrium. Uh, so the physical exam, looking at the PMI, that should be in the fifth intercostal space, mid-clavicular line, if that is displaced, that's an indicator that the heart is weak and has enlarged. Uh, and then auscultation to the lungs. Uh, you know, if you hear crackles, uh, usually at the basis, but you could hear it all across. In episodes of acute uh, heart failure, you may har have wheezing rather than uh, rails or crackles. And you have to be aware of that because the edema could happen so quickly that you will have thickening on the small airways that will cause you to wheeze rather than the crackles that is when the fluid is in the alveoli. You could also see dullness to percussion or decrease in the, in the air sounds in the basis of the lungs when there is effusion. So all of those are physical findings in patients with heart failure. So I just want to go back over those real quick, sort of in summary, from a history standpoint, you mentioned orthopnea is a key indicator, orthopnea being you get short of breath when you lay flat, mm -hmm. as well as PND or paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, where they get short of breath, they go to bed fine, and they get short of breath in the middle of the night and wake up. And both of those may lead them to say, well, I'm having to sleep on several pillows to prop my head up, 
or I'm having to get up and sleep in my easy chair yeah. uh, because so, I can't breathe. Same process, same pathophysiology mm -hmm. is redistribution of fluid. Those who have orthopnea, the threshold is so low that just lying flat, they are short of breath. Mm -hmm. Those who have PND, they are okay, but when the redistribution fully occurs, then they have it. It, those two symptoms are important because mm -hmm. people with congestive heart failure die from acute respiratory failure most of the time if it's due to the congestion. They could also die from arrhythmias because right. when the heart muscle is weak, particularly in the systolic heart failure, uh, you could have a, an arrhythmia, a BF or a BTAC, and you may die suddenly. And that's why when you have congestive heart failure symptoms and the systolic function is less than 35%, it is known that you are at a higher risk of sudden death, and that's when you qualify to have a defibrillator placed. So many times you'll see patients with systolic heart failure that have a defibrillator, and they have never had an arrhythmia, they have never, it's for primary prophylaxis of sudden cardiac death. So, but, but going back to the symptoms of what you can do is that if somebody is complaining of PND or orthopnea, it's a little bit concerning, and you have to make a judgment call, can I handle this in the outpatient mm -hmm. setting, or is this a patient that needs to go to the emergency department. When it comes to the right-sided heart failure symptoms, patients rarely die because they have lower extremity edema. This doesn't kill people. Uh, you know, they may feel uncomfortable, they may right. be limited. Uh, so those patients is more likely that you will be able to manage in the outpatient setting. The edema in the lower extremity, again, is not life-threatening. The exception to the rule will be if you have failed with increased mm -hmm. dose of diuretics, to decrease the fluid in these individuals, then it may be that the same swelling that is occurring in the legs is happening in the small bowels and in the stomach, and that the diuretics are not being absorbed properly. And that's an indication to bring a patient into the hospital to give IV diuretics when they have failed outpatient diuresis. But the first attempt should be outpatient diuresis. Um, the other historical finding you mentioned was dyspnea on exertions, or shortness of breath when you're getting up and walking. And then you mentioned several physical exam findings. So uh, jugular venous pressure, so the, the pulsations of the vein going up higher towards the neck, what position would you put the patient in to look for that? Yeah, so if you are lying flat completely, so what you're trying to look at when you look at the JVP is what is the pressure in the right atrium. That's what you're trying to look at. So if the patient is lying completely flat and the neck is at the level of the heart, chances are that the veins are going to be congested. So mm -hmm. having venous distension when you're lying flat doesn't really tell you anything. So you have to angulate the patient and make a, a, a measurement from the angle of Lewis uh, in the sternum to what is the highest level where you see the JVP. And you may need to angulate the patient 45 degrees first and take a look. Maybe at that time it's collapsed. If the mm -hmm. whole, whole venous system is collapsed, at 45 degrees, chances are that the JVP is not elevated. But then you may have to go all the way up. Uh, you know, if, you, if you're still at 45 degrees and the veins are fully distended, then your JVP is actually higher. So you have to continue to go up and see where the level is. And typically, if it's more than eight centimeters from the angle of Lewis in the vertical distance, it's elevated. If somebody's standing up, if, if they do Balsalva, if anybody mm -hmm. does Balsalva, the JVP is going to increase because you're increasing the intrathoracic pressure and the venous return doesn't have anywhere to go, it will be high. So patients should be relaxed at the time that you are looking at the JVP. And what you look at is at the, at the neck veins and you could see a column of blood filling uh, and you just have to get familiar on how to measure. And you could help yourself with the hepatojugular mm -hmm. reflux to see that up level and see how much it goes up higher and use that as your marker and then make that uh, distinction. Uh, it is hard to explain in, in a sure. conversation, but it's a technique. So to answer your question, they shouldn't be lying flat because it's going to be elevated. You should look in an angle, usually somewhere between 45 and 90 degrees angle, where you could see the column of blood in the top portion of the veins. So a good rule of thumb is if they're sitting straight up and have fully distended jugular veins, that's a good indication that of the JVP is elevated. Right. Uh, I, and if they're laying 15 degrees and there's no elevation, probably a good indication that there's no there. That's okay. a general rule of thumb, yes.